Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Mike Walker and today we're going to fix a photograph with a really bad crease on the left hand side sent to me by a friend of mine who obviously wanted it repairing and uh, I looked at it and I thought mm, that's a tricky job but it can be done and uh, we used Photoshop using the clone stamp tool and also the quick selection tool to replace an item that was totally obliterated and uh, this is how we did it. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and this is the picture in question with the damage on the left hand side. You can see the crease is quite bad and uh, actually goes through the hair and the, the sort of um, the headdress of the bridesmaid there which uh, is going to need fixing. And it destroys one of the flowers on the left hand side as we look. Um, so we may need to take that out and um, replace it and put it back on again. So that means we're going to be using two tools. We're going to be using the clone stamp tool to repair the crease damage and we're probably going to use a selection tool to select the flower and uh, replace it on the other side. So um, let's start, let's uh, look at the picture there, I'm not happy with the uh, the top of the frame there, we've got um, that line going across which uh, we can we can fix that and we're going to fix that with a clone stamp tool and that'll give you an idea of, of how this works and it's a pretty good illustration. So we're going to duplicate the original by pressing Ctrl J, Command J on a Mac and uh, that will give us another copy. Uh, we'll turn the original off and we're just going to be looking and working on this uh, this original copy. If I turn it off there we've just got a blank screen so we're working on this one layer uh, and uh, we've turned the other one off and we'll just keep that safe there. Okay so um, to show you how the um, the clone stamp tool works I'm going to get rid of this line at the top. If we just zoom in, uh, let's zoom in fairly tight there, about there, pressing the space bar and dragging the image. Okay so let's grab the clone stamp tool there and um, the way the clone stamp tool works is it takes pixels from one area of the image and you can put them into another area of the, of the image which is great for repairing things and uh, let's just show you here how this could work. The first thing you do uh, if you want to repair, I want to repair this top line here so if I press Alt and I select, I'm going to get right between those bricks there. Press left mouse button, that gives me my sample area. And there, can we see how that's just give me a straight line up and it's now copied that image directly above it. So it's actually duplicating the above area. I'm just going to get the space bar and drag the image across and I'm going to continue going across here because it's still sampling from just where the cross is below and you can see how it's cloning those pixels and putting them above. There's a little line there but I don't think anybody would see that. There we go again and we're just losing this. So that's basically how the clone stamp works by taking an area very close to uh, the area you're going to replace and moving it just above. I mean we're only moving it a couple of millimetres above and because the lines, can you see the lines are all straight and it's looking pretty good. So that's a bit of an overview. Um, You've got to define the area that you uh, want to sample from by pressing the ALT button and the left mouse button. So as I press it there, can you see how it alters because it's sampling from a different place now and I press the ALT button, it will sample from where it is now. And now it's sampling from where it is. Can you see that's sampling from the wall and the size of the circle. The other important thing is uh, the settings I use for using the, the, the clone stamp tool uh, the brush needs to be soft, so we've got a soft edge. Can you see how we've got a soft edge there? That's at 60%, uh, between 60 and 70%. The opacity at 100% and the flow at 70% and that seems to work really well. The advantage of the clone stamp tool uh, is that uh, it will you can define where those pixels will come from 
uh, as opposed to using the spot healing brush, which does a similar job, um, but it dis the, the computer or the software determines where the pixels come from. And it's a lot better if you can determine where the pixels come from because you can probably make a better decision than the computer can. The computer will just look at a similar area and use those pixels. Whereas I think we're probably a little bit more intelligent than a computer, uh, only just, and we can determine where the pixels are going to come from. So for example, um, let me just zoom into this bad area here. Let's go in there a couple of times. Use the space bar to drag. If we look at the worst part of the crease there, and I use the, um, let's go to the spot healing brush, and I do this. There, it's done the repair. It doesn't look too bad, uh, but we've got this area here where it's just taken a different tone, and uh, there's an area there where it's dark. Now you can try again and do that. See if it, we should have made it better. There again, you've made it better, but it's not as efficient as using the clone stamp tool. It's not bad. Uh, in fact, that's quite good, um, but the clone stamp tool you can actually tell it where the pixels are coming from. Now that looks really wishy-washy there, all that area now, it's just undefined. There's a beam there and there's a, there's a wood panelled door there and it all looks the same now. So if I undo this and we'll do it again with the, let's go back, back, back. And we go back to the clone stamp tool. We select it there. And uh, as you know how it works, let's get the bracket keys a bit smaller. This area here, if we sample from the door here, in particular from there, because I know straight down from there I've got a plank, or you know, part of a, um, a, a panel, if you like. Now if I go across here like this, and down, we've actually sampled that now from the door, and you can still see the panelling whereas you couldn't on the spot healing brush. Now let's sample again here and go across and down, down, down. Now that's looking a lot better. Just lose that little spot there. Um, and because it's on uh, flow 80%, it didn't do, it just disguised it, but now that's probably 100%, you, you, you click a couple of times and it gives you the full 100%. That's what the flow does, it doesn't give you it all at once, it gives you 70% the first time and then you click it again, it gives you more. That's how that works. Now this bit here, um, I would sample from the beam, there, right in the middle of the beam, so I put the target there, press, select, now I've got that, can you see how I've got that area there, at the right shades, and if I go down from here, and sample it again up there. Now we've got that edge. Now that's looking good. I'm going to sample from the center of the beam now from there, bring it down. Just got a little bit too far there, you see, and got that other one. So again, sample from there, cover that one up. Add sample from here, come across keeping in a straight line, so we've still got the beam, that's fine, and then for that bit there, I'd sample from the shadowed area there, move it across, can you see how that's lined up, you line it up, same there, line it up, um, I don't want to go too far because that's the shadow under that beam, so I'm going to sample again from here, and move that across to there, and to there, that little too bad. We've got a little bit of a corner there if we were really fussy. We'd sample there, bring it across to there, and that's fixed that. There's a little scratch there, which is going to be an easy one again because um, we've got a nice background to work with. You see how that crease comes down between that brick there? Well, if we sample this brick in the middle, let me sample from, from the, that little corner there. 
which will be the same as that corner there. Can you see how it's made that there? And then I, I drag this like this. There, we've, co we've copied those bricks there. And that's, that's looking really good. Let's go across to the end actually and then it's more consistent. So that's got rid of that scratch there. And this is how it works. You just sample the bits that you think are going to work best. It does get tricky when, let's look at the worst bit. This is the worst bit here. So um, let's fix as far as we can here. For this I would sample here. I'd come and fix this here. Careful not to get into a hair. I think I dare go that far. This what it looks a bit like a hat to be honest with you. I could probably get away with just leaving it, but um, I think we'll, we'll do it properly. And we'll get that, uh, let's sample this door panel here. And just move that across there like that. Go as far as we dare. I'm gonna sample the dark bit there. Come down. That is a scratch, that is a scratch. I'm going to go a little bit down there like this. Not too. We've still got that there. We have to repair that. So again, this is the trickiest bit. Let's sample this bit here. I need to make the circle smaller using the bracket keys. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to sample right in the middle of that dark area there and move up. down from here a bit more make it a little bit bigger just come down a little bit more that's a part of a scratch there just sample again there now I am going to go into a hair here um, but I think we need to like that we've just taken a little bit off there but we've, we've smoothed that edge out and we can replace this bit here so um we're actually taking away things that we don't really want to but it's where the damage is so we're gonna have to there and we're actually going into a, a hair quite a lot there but we're still we can replace this i'll show you how to do that Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to use a different tool for this particular bit and we're going to do the, use the quick selection tool, um, which is this one here. And I am going to select the flower on her head there. Uh, I'm not going to mess about too much with it because it's black and white image. I've got no colours to worry about. Um, it's selected the whole of the flower in one go. Very easy selection. Um, I'm now going to select a mask so if I go up here and select a mask that will give me it just highlights the color there um, so we know what we've selected and I'm just going to press OK and as you can see there I've got a new layer now with just that flower on it um, if I turn on the low the, the layer beneath just to see that's what we've got now if I use the move tool and move this I can move this on its own like that now obviously it's the wrong way around, so um, I reckon if I flip that image, which I can do by going to Edit, Transform and Flip Horizontal, like that. Can you see how it switched it around? It's still not quite at the right angle. Um, let me just move there, you see that's still not quite at the right angle, but we can move it around a little bit more like this. See how we can spin it right around. Well, to line it with a hair and the bit that we've lost in the repair, um, I think we could quite easily put that about there. Looks a bit nice. Um, it perhaps looks a bit big, but we can, if we squash it down, make it smaller. We can mani manipulate that image uh, in whatever way we like, really. We can make it bigger, smaller, turn it twist it, rotate it, it could have been a little bit bigger, like that, and there we have it, 
so there we are um, I think that's as good as that's gonna get but it looks quite nice and I think we've uh, we've done pretty well with that um, so I'm now going to finish the rest of the image I'll speed this up so you'd have to uh, you've got a good idea now how it works Okay, I think um, I think that's just about there now. Um, so if you have a look at uh, before and after, let's just see what we've done here. Um, we started off with this image, and now we've got this. Uh, you see the worst part of the damage there, and then we've replaced the flower on the bridesmaid's head there. Um, it looks pretty much like about where it was, to be honest, when I look at that. Uh, so I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, that's it. Um, so it's possible to uh, to repair these pictures. They look as though they, you know, but if, as long as you've got pixels on there that look similar to the pixels that have disappeared or that have been destroyed, then you can, you've got a chance to repair. And it's, it's, uh, it's amazing what you can do when you look at it and you see that massive crease and you think, well, blimey, that's going to be a... a bigger to but you can do it it's, it's very very surprising how you can do it so there we go um thanks for staying with us hope you've learned something uh please subscribe if you haven't done so already hit the notification bell and i'll catch you in the next one